All right, so here's what we got, folks. See that roller there that's on the blade? Well, the one over here, we noticed it wasn't turning. So we pulled it off of there. It's one of those. I better put this nut back up here before I forget. Here, I'll get that. Go ahead. And come over here and we'll show you. We took it apart. So there's the roller. We pulled the bearings out of it. Right here on this side, you can see where it rubbed a flat spot in. Yeah, let's see if I can get close. Show that flat. Put your finger there. Uh, you just, just turn it, rotate it back and forth. Yeah. You can see there's a flat spot on it. So it wasn't happening for long. We pulled the, there's the spacer. It's the rear spacer. That's the rear spacer. Here's the one bearing, which, I mean, that turns real nice. And then here's the other bearing, which you can see is all rusted and it is locked up. You can't turn that at all. It's spinning in my finger. So I got to order parts. This is the bad bearing here. I don't know, can you see it? It's all rusted. That's the one I pulled out of the wood miser. This is the replacement from wood miser. It is a R8-2RS and they're $7.96 from wood miser. This is an R8-2RS and they were $12 for 10 of them from Amazon. Shame on you wood miser. That's just wrong. Not only that, the wood miser bearing, I mean, obviously they're not very good quality, made in China. So it's not gonna be any better than that. And I bought the whole part. So I'm just gonna go put this on the mill now. Okay, so this is the replacement part I bought, which is the non-relube. Um, there's no grease fittings in here, in other words. There's none there in the end. There's no grease fittings anywhere on it, and it uses sealed bearings. And that's exactly what's on here. There's no grease fittings anywhere, and it uses sealed bearings. Okay, now let's go back to my rollers. Okay, so this is the rollers. This is the old one. I put new bearings in it. This is the new roller I got that was on this assembly. If you look at the new roller, there's no space in there between the bearings. They touch each other. So I was looking at the parts from the old one, and I found this part, which you can see there's a little lump in it there. You can see that against my finger. This is a spacer that goes between the bearings. On the ones that have a grease fitting, not on the sealed bearings. So what they had was, they had this roller, they had this bearing with one seal, they had this, and then they had a, a bearing in here on the top that had two seals. That's why the seal went bad, because this thing was rubbing on it and there's no grease in there. This never had grease in it. That was supposed to be, you know, a, a, the, the kind you pump up with grease. And yet, it's on a machine that has no grease fittings, so that's why my bearing went bad. It was made wrong. Thought that was interesting anyway. I'm not going to bother complaining about it, but figured I'd cover it here so you know what to look for if you have one. So, so again, yeah. There's the new roller. It's got the seals on both ends. It goes on this way. That's how I'm going to put it on. Goes like that, and then that goes on, and it should be. Then I just have to adjust these so it doesn't do this. And then I have to adjust the blade so it's the right angle here. This, you know, and I have to adjust this arm so it's at the right height. Yeah, there's a lot of adjustments. For now, I'm just putting this on and cutting my finger on a sharp blade. Told you you were going to do that. I called it. Yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> Keeping my hand away from it now. <laughs> yeah. After it bites you once. 
All right, so we'll come back once I've got this nut tightened down all the way since I'm doing this the old fashioned way. Adjust this arm so it's parallel to the bunks. Adjust these rollers so they're deflecting the blade a quarter inch down. Adjust the blade between the rollers so it's the same height as, it's the same uh, parallel to the bunk, the same height over here as it is over here. And then adjust the rollers this way or this way from back here in the back so that when you put your tool on this blade, it's parallel to the bed of the sawmill. That simple. And once you've done all that, you have a well-adjusted sawmill that can get along with other sawmills. Right. Four steps. Four steps. The new roller's on. The bleeding has stopped. Uh, I'm going to tighten up the blade, move this out, adjust the height, move it all the way in, adjust the height, make sure that we're, this rod goes parallel to this bunk. Um, the way you do that is there's a screw right there. Come on. And what that does is it, here I'll back up a minute, I'll show you. What that screw does is it adjusts this up and down. Okay, mm -hmm. so you see how that moves? Mm -hmm. So you get the arm level first. That's the very first thing you have to check. So that's what we're doing. Safety guard is being removed. Just bringing that out. I gotta tighten the plate up. And I need to turn the blade a little. Just to make sure it's riding right. Not on any bumps or anything. So over here, we are at exactly seven inches. Okay, so if I now move this in, when we're in here, we're at seven and a sixteenth. Can you see that? Probably, I don't know. So this arm is not perfectly level. I have to drop this side of the head a little bit. I'm not sure which way I gotta drop it. Just unscrewing it maybe? Yeah, I think I did it. Okay, so out here, I am at between seven and seven and a sixteenth. I'm gonna move this over here. I'm at seven. So it hasn't changed? Uh, it has, but not enough. So about that much again, I gotta move it. There. Not even a quarter turn, huh? Not even an eighth of a turn. It's very sensitive. Exactly seven. I'm exactly seven, so that's perfect for that. So the arm is adjusted. So now I check it here. At seven, seven and a seven, seven and an eighth. So now I know I moved this roller, so this roller needs to go up an eighth of an inch. I'm just trying to loosen this nut on the bottom so I can use the Allen key and adjust this. And I'm going to smack my face on this blade. Wait a minute. Wait, I'm going the wrong way. That's right. I loosened it first, and then I tightened it again. There we go. Is it more difficult to get it from the other side? So wait, so this is higher, so I want to raise this side. Actually, it would be because of the way the bars are here, huh? So to raise this side, an eighth of an inch, that's a lot.
the top one is what controls the height. There it goes. Moved up. There I go, just a shade higher. You don't have to do this when you're replacing just the blade, right? This is only when No, you... when you replace the blade, you just replace the blade. You should check this periodically. You should check the height of your blade periodically. Mm -hmm. Oh, just a touch more. Don't cut your arm. Beads on your blood. By the way, the top Allen key is the one that controls the height. The bottom, you just screw in to tighten it up so it can't move. Okay. Perfect. Absolutely perfect now. So, oh, I gotta screw the bottom one in. Make them tight. It's this way. Something about having these sharp teeth pointing at me I don't like. It's like skydiving without a parachute. Or maybe it's uh, just your memory of that old movie, what, Maximum Overdrive? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, that's what, if I ever make t-shirts, I swear I'm gonna blood all the way down, it's gonna be perfect. <laughs> Yeah, maximum overdrive. The sawmill comes alive, goes after its users. It won't get very far. Yeah, it can't move, but boy, can it cut. <laughs> <laughs> what it does is it leaves branches out and you trip on the branch and fall. <laughs> now I'm reminded of Tucker and Dale versus Evil. This one up. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's lulled him into a false sense of security. Now that everything's tight, check it one more time. You want to see? Come up close. What does that one read? Top of the blade, where does it read? Like seven and 12. A sixteenth. Yeah. Okay. And over here? Same thing. That's right. Perfectly level. So, now the only thing I gotta worry about is this angle here, whether it's parallel to the bed or tipped up or tipped down. So, I gotta go find the tool to do that. Almost, but not quite perfect. Come on around this side. Okay. I can start filming and I'll show you. All right, ready. All right, so I put my level, it goes across from one bunk to the other and all it's doing is giving me a flat surface to measure off of. I clip this thing onto the blade so it, it's held tight against the bottom of the blade. And if you look at this end, there's a smaller gap than what's at this end. It, the blade needs to be like, blade needs to be down just like that. Just just a hair. Okay, that's where it is, that's where it needs to be. Right. Oh, and when you put this on, you gotta be in between teeth. Don't you don't want to be out at the end of a tooth where the tooth is curved down, it'll throw your readings all the all off. Oh you know what? Hmm. That side's no good. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. So I need to adjust that side. Oh, I'm glad I checked. So up and down, it's gonna be that one and that one. 
And which way do I want to go? Let me look again. Can you tell with it wobbling? Yeah, I want to go down in front over here. So to do that, I need to come up on the back end, which means loosen the top one and screw in the bottom one. Since the top one controls it, we'll start there. Okay. But if someone was buying a sawmill, is there a reason to consider lubricated bearings versus the sealed lubrication? I would not buy the lubricated bearings because they're the sealed bearings with the seals ripped out of them. Huh. So they're not really meant to run that way. So, yeah, I wouldn't. Are they just cheaper or something? No. Some people just prefer to be able to grease their own bearings, you know? Hmm. That's what Irvin does. He has the greasable ones. But every time he uses a sawmill, he squirts grease in there and he's blown his seals completely out the back. You know, he's got grease oozing out back here and grease oozing out up here, or excuse me, here and here. Ah. Yeah, it's one of them days. Need a hand? Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> but it doesn't give him any kind of advantage or makes it, it's just peace of mind kind of thing for him? I don't know. I have never run the greasable ones, so I can't say for sure. Hmm. I mean, I wouldn't think it's going to make much difference. You know, if you buy the bearings off Amazon, stop rocking me. Well, the top one's not controlling it. I apologize to the audience who doesn't care about the bearings conversation. I know it could be unbearingable sometimes, but... Unbearingable. Smack him. <laughs> Please, somebody hit him. Put him out of my misery. Hey, I'm just rolling with it, you know? I'm not sure this is working. I may have to... Is listen to one of them to get this to work. Hmm. All right, let's try that. Does that mean this other roller on this side that you didn't replace could have the same bearing issue? Yes, it definitely means that. Is she going to get a replacement for it or wait till it blows out? I'm waiting. Is it looking any better? It's looking a little better, isn't it? Yeah. Come out of there, you. Stop rocking. Wait a minute. Screwing it in, I go the other way. It confuse me when I have to do it upside down. I gotta come over there to look. Right. Nothing's ever easy. Get in uh, the skidster a hundred times a day. Climb over the sawmill a hundred times a day. Well, that looks perfect now. <laughs> All right. So, we got the angle of the blade right. It's an airplane. Just an airplane. They're not bombing. They're not attacking. Could have been Russian. Could have been a goose. Spruce goose? Spruce goose. All right, I'm going to go put the tools away, and then uh, we'll grab a little log from somewhere and throw it on here. Here we go. Okay. Grab the little baby log. We're going to do four cuts. One on each side just to square it up, and that'll tell us if we're cutting square or not. 
So I'm just gonna go across, we'll roll it, I'll cut it again. All right, here we go. so much faster now. That roller was really, that was a problem for a while because it's been cutting slow for a while and now it's just ripping through. The, I mean, I had it turned way down and it was scooting right along. <laughs> All right, let me go get the square and see if we cut that square. Be right back. Meanwhile, on the other side, bushes. All right, here's the moment of truth. Come on around. Come on around, Come on around to my side, because okay. you got to see this side. So, if it's square, we did good. If it's not square, we screwed up. That looks darn close. It's a sixteenth of an inch, maybe. So I'm off a thirty-second of an inch on the parallelness. That's just, close. Could it just be this log is? Well, it could be the way I put it up against this. Yeah. Let's take it over here. Okay, so over here. There's no daylight. See yeah. that? So the log is just twisting on me. What about here? Here there's daylight again. Here there's no daylight. Are we not going flat? No, we got a flat cut. It starts to twist here. There's, you could just barely see a little bit of daylight in some spots, but I mean, let's take a look. Right. That's flat. So are you saying it's the issue with the saw? I'm saying that's as close as I'm ever gonna get it. You see here, it's off by a whole lot. Yeah, but this whole log was worked pretty bad on this side. Yeah, but look at that. I mean, that's a lot. At the other end, it's not there at all. I wonder if the bed is... I mean, over here, we're good.
And that is perfectly parallel. Okay. So, so it's a frame that's unbound, uh, uneven. Well, either I didn't have the log up against these correctly, or these are not perpendicular here. Oh. Look at this. They're off a little bit. Oh, okay. That's why. All right, well, I can adjust those. That's easy enough. I'll go get my wrench again that I put away because I thought we were done. <laughs> oh, that's it, turn that off. So, we got the blade set perfect. The log dogs, they're off by a sixteenth of an inch. That's why our cut was off by a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth in some spots. So I have to go through and square up the, the log dogs, but should be good then. It's just, it's so hot out here today, I'm not doing it right now. I'm going to just put the mill away and go get a beer. <laughs> so thanks for watching. When? How is it? Cold. Horrible. <laughs> I was thinking of the immortal words of Socrates who said, I drank what? Yeah, look at that. That right there is uh, some spalted dunder pine. And you can see, you know, right here, the marbling effect of this 22 year old tree. And like just how amazing it looks across the entire grain of the wood. It's uh, definitely a wonder and, and pretty, pretty good. Right here, you can see some crotching done from the, uh, the heartwood of it. And that's, that's what makes this truly a marvel of of woodcutting woodcutting textures yeah yeah